here's why GPT-3 is an important development in AI. Hi everybody, Eric Enga here. I'm the principal for the Digital Marketing Solutions Business Unit at Perficient. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about GPT-3, which is one of the most exciting developments in uh, the artificial intelligence uh, space in quite some time. So what is it? Well, it's an autoregressive language model that uses deep learning to provide, uh, produce human-like text and capabilities around analyzing human uh, text like humans, uh, and as well as solve other natural language processing problems. This includes things like writing content, summarizing content, uh, drafting emails, um, completing partially filled out spreadsheets, uh, um, building images or completing images, writing code, and, and more stuff. This sounds incredible, doesn't it? Well, it is. And it isn't. So let me explain why. So first of all, just some background. GPT-3 is from OpenAI. This is a company founded by Elon Musk, uh, yes, of Tesla and SpaceX fame, and Sam Altman of the Y Combinator Starter uh, Incubator. Uh, and um, combined with other investors, they put in a billion dollars of quote unquote seed capital. Um, and then a little later, Microsoft threw in another billion dollars of investment. So, you know, really, real, really, really well funded. Um, and what makes GPT-3 so special is it's trained on a vast data set, which basically is the uh, open uh, internet based on sources like uh, OpenCrawl and Wikipedia and the like. Um, and uh, so the data set it's built on is vast, and it has a language model built around 175 billion parameters. Well, you know, what does that mean, really? It's 175 billion parameters. Well, let's put it this way. This is 10 times larger than the previously largest model ever released, which was Microsoft's Turing NLG algorithm, released only in March of 2020 of this year, which had 17 billion parameters. And, and so this scaling has led to some really impressive demonstrations of GPT-3. For example, this includes an article released by The Guardian, which we're showing on the screen right now. And what made this article unique is that it was 100% written by the GPT-3 algorithm, um, which is very, very cool. Um, and it's pretty readable, uh, and there are many other truly impressive demonstrations shown across all of the areas of capability that I talked about, uh, talked about above. So if it has all this incredible stuff, what really is the limitation? Well, it's still highly prone to mistakes. In tests of GPT-3 created content, you could still see that 52% of users who read it were able to recognize that it was machine generated. And, 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 and also, it has no real model of the, of the real world. It just has this data that it's collected from the internet. And so there's lots of things that it doesn't understand how to consider. And finally, or not really finally, but additionally, because the model was built on the open internet, it's prone to bad biases. So here's one example showing a really bad uh, and clear preju prejudice um, you know, which, you know, just clearly unacceptable, right? So to be fair to OpenAI, they actually acknowledge these limitations. In fact, co-founder Sam Altman said as much in a tweet this past July 19th. In fact, I'm showing you the, uh, the, the tweet right now. Um, the other thing to be concerned about with GPT-3 is it could also be used in bad ways, um, you know, by scammers and, uh, and spammers uh, uh, alike. And for that reason, OpenAI is controlling access uh, to GPT-3 to very specific uh, uh, organizations through an application process right now. But having said all this, kind of my summary of where we are with GPT-3, uh, uh, well, some practical ways to use it really is, you can use it to summarize articles, summarize your emails, maybe even write draft emails or perform simple translations. 
create draft designs, create draft images, develop draft quizzes even. Um, but for all of those, supplement it with human review. Like, turn yourself into an editor with it. And just remember, it might be missing in entire areas that you find important. Uh, and make sure that you go get those uh, and fill those things in. But it gives you a good starting place that actually could have a commercial value. Uh, you know, I mean, honestly, editing is, is often easier than starting from scratch. And so that's one way and one aspect of this that I want to address. But the other is, you know, where are we in terms of the creation of a true artificial general intelligence? And that's where we're talking about an intelligence that's, that's good, as good as humans at solving a broad array of, of problems across a wide scope of capabilities. Uh, honestly, my take is that we have a long way to go. Even if you take the GPT-3 model and scale it up by 1,000 to 175 trillion parameters, you'll likely have three major problems that stand in the way of accomplishing a true AGI, artificial general intelligence. First of all, it's limited by the data that it's trained on. While the open internet is a very large data source, it's a poor quality source. You can try to curate the internet, but who do you pick to do the curation? Choose with care, of course, because now you'll be subject to the biases of the curators who you pick. So who's to judge what's right or wrong here? And that's a big question. And while the early test data shows that GPT-3 is a big step forward from prior language models, um, we saw in one of the, uh, well, we saw in the data that we looked at that it, the benefit of adding more and more parameters is leveling off. So continuing to add parameters, the amount of incremental gain is decreasing rapidly. It's unclear that it will ever get to human level uh, accuracy um, truly. And, and I actually believe it won't just by adding more parameters, because I personally believe that there are other modalities of human thinking that are um, that, that cause our human level intelligence that aren't well modeled by the current approaches to AI. In other words, I think there's more stuff that needs to be invented uh, to truly get there. That said, there are really interesting ways to use GPT-3 today if you can get access. Again, there's an application process. But if you are able to do that, just make sure you stay within the true range of its capabilities and it could do some really interesting things for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Here's Why. If you did, please click on the subscribe now button uh, link that you see below uh, so you won't miss any future episodes. Thank you.